Hello, everybody. Welcome to Snack and Learn. So here's the thing. Because of scheduling difficulties, you still get a Snack and Learn. But what stinks for you is it's a Snack and Learn with me. I'm going to do a presentation today. So I didn't want to waste the time slot. We have it. I got your attention. You can catch this on replay. But I've got some stuff to share. So I'm going to go ahead and dive in and share it. This is a little bit of a revised version of a keynote speech that I give that has a lot of really good content in it on how to overcome the things that keep us as entrepreneurs from paying attention to our finances. And I hope what you'll find from this is that there are a few very simple things you can do to take care of this for yourself. So if you're an entrepreneur, hang in there with me. I love it. I got a deck. I got all the things you want to see. In fact, look what happens. I go small, debt goes big, but I want to spend some time with you talking about how to kick finance overwhelmed to the curb, especially as we're in a new year. Oh, wait, I just see, I see Jessica's here, but I don't see her in the stream yard. So let me see. And do you have the link to get in, Jessica? We may have to stall my kicking finance overwhelmed to the curb because it looks like Jessica's here in the comments. But let me drop the link in that she needs to get in here with me. And then you guys have saved yourself from a Pam Pryor lecture. Well, I'll have to schedule to do another time about kicking finance overwhelmed to the curb. So let me get Jessica the link here. I'm going to drop this right into the comments so that she can get it. And then she'll join me in here. So hang on. There's your link, Jessica. And I am in here. And as soon as you pop in, I will kill the slide here and have you join me. Now, I know you're all disappointed, but don't be because we've got an amazing guest today. And I'm really glad she's going to be able to jump in and join us. So now that I think about it, anybody reading the comments can jump in and join us. But I'm going to hold for Jessica here for a couple minutes and know that coming sometime in the near future, we will have kicking finance overwhelmed to the curb. Just let me double check with Jessica. Are you able to click on that? Make sure she can come in. Streamyard.com slash AMSNMIAE9R. Nothing's an easy code. I'll hang for a little bit here. And then if that doesn't work, you will get my little mini lecture. Let's see if she's coming in. We'll give her a little bit of a countdown. Get yourself some coffee. I'll have some water. You can see our nicely redesigned music room. Deb just got it. I was away for the weekend, so Deb uh, totally revamped the furniture, and it looks great. Deb and Maria, as a matter of fact, a friend of ours, we're pretty happy with how it looks. Let's go back here. I'll give you the big shot of it. There you go. Oh, you can't see over my hair. Let me lift it up. You can see more. There we go. Music and quiet room. All set. She said, can you send it via messenger maybe? Okay. Now. So let me send her this message via messenger. Jessica. Uh, and my team will figure out um, where that link did go. It's in your messenger now, Jessica. Do, do, do. There we go. Now I see her. Oh, got to turn your camera on, Jessica. It's still off. Hang tight. There we go. Hey. hey hello. <laughs> How are you? Well, that was Great. an adventure. I have absolutely no idea what is going on with this tech today, but you know how it is. It, you, know, it, you, know. you know what? When it happens, it happens. And I have learned, as you can probably tell, to just roll with it. It's, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's part of the game anymore. It's what we do. It's how we do it. And yeah. it's just so easy to, to roll with. It's so much easier to roll with than get stressed about. Well, we're real people. You know, none of us is perfect at this. Please don't think that you need to be perfect at this. You know what? That's actually a really good point, because one of the things I learned when I came into the entrepreneur world, which was actually a little bit different than how I behaved in corporate, was it's so much better to just do it than for wait to it be wait to wait for it to be perfect and do it. 
A hundred percent. I look long, back all day you know, long. And I, yeah. And I know this is going to happen forever, but I look at back at videos I did five years ago and it's like, wow, I've really come a long way. That's awesome. And I know five years from now, I'll look back at these and go, wow, you've really come a long way. This is right. awesome. Well, so, well, how are you? First oh, of all, I'm good. Please. I'm so good. I was just like over here. Like I had all my devices. I was like, why isn't that connected? Why is she not? I, it's so weird. Anyway, but I'm good. I'm good. I'm here. I'm ready. I'm, I'm super so excited. Glad. Yeah. I'm sure everybody else is too, because hearing from me is never top of the list. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's not true. I'm sure that's not true. <laughs> I am just kidding. Well, let me give you an official welcome. Thank you for powering through it. I'm really, really, really glad to have you here. Yeah, so you. let me tell folks who you are, and then I want to jump in and ask you a bunch of questions because I'm very, very interested in what you do. And I'm so glad you've joined our group to share this with us. Me too. So Thank you. This is Mistral. She is the creator, or is it Mistral? Oh, Madrigal. Or I'm sorry, which thing are you talking about? <laughs> it says, I'm Mistral, creator of Living Inflow and founder. So how do nope. you, how do you? No, 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 no. That's the wrong person. Oh, thank you. Oh my God. That's big. Oh my God. That's so interesting. I scrolled down too far. That, I was like, wait, something's not, this is tech day from hell. I it's okay. It. We're going to talk There's about it today. <laughs> Jessica Madrigal. And is yes. it Madrigal or Madrigal? It's just Madrigal. Perfect. Yeah. Of salted orange. Oh, and here are all my links. This is great. All right, folks, Jessica, Yes. is a tech genius who's going to help me make sure that I never go through this again. Right. Ah, right. This is part of the game, I, but she is a very seasoned designer who's incredibly passionate about design and creating really dynamic solutions for business owners who challenge the norm. Mm -hmm. So she's not looking for the average business owner. She's looking for the ones who challenge the norm. She'd say her superpower is capturing your vision and bringing it to fruition. Mm -hmm. She owns salted orange studios with her husband, Javi. He's the video broadcasting and vector guy, and she's the web graphics and print design ninja. They're also passionate about health and wellness, and they founded a nonprofit in case they were bored. They founded a nonprofit <laughs> that benefits first responders who are battling heart disease, and it's called Underdog Ninja Foundation, and I absolutely love that. And one of the things I want to do before we get off the call today is find out how we can find out more about that. Sure. On a personal note, she's a big nerd who thrives on family, faith, and football, the three F's, and lives in Washington State with her husband and her twin daughters. So how old are the twin daughters? They are 10 going on 14 for sure. Uh, yeah, that's a big They've been going so on 14 for a while now. <laughs> since they were four. I had one like that. Not mm -hmm. twins, but a single one. It's so did, are, you, are you NFL football or college football or both? NFL. And oh, by the way, I, and I didn't say this ahead of time, so that's fine. His name's Javi. I know it looks like Javi, Javi. but it's Javi. Okay. No worries. No, it's Got fine. It. Uh, nobody gets it right. It's fine. Um, we actually are big 49er fans because he grew up in the Bay Area. So we're like 49ers all day long. Awesome. And, yeah. We've officially trained our girls up to be just rigid 49er fans. They don't want to hear it. <laughs> That sounds like just like the Eagles out here. Yep. So there we go. That's that's our we we were just like stricken with stress over football in the last couple of weeks, but oh, we're yeah. over it now. We're past football season. It's okay. We're okay. All is well. Do you do? Are you into the college football scene as well, or is it pretty much just NFL? Just NFL. We used to. I used to be a college fan. I grew up in Eugene, Oregon, where the Ducks play, and so I was like, you know, all about the Ducks when I lived there. And it's been a long time since I've been there. I'm not really. I don't really follow like college ball a lot, but yeah. I love football. Got it. Well, all right. Well, so let's find out. How did you get into this whole process of working on design? And I assume it's branding and imaging and, yep. and all of that PR design for entrepreneurs who are a little bit out of the norm. Like what got you here? Tell us a little bit about your journey. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, the, the long short stories that I actually started doing photography, gosh, I don't know, 12 or 13 years ago or something. It was like 2006. I started doing photography out of necessity because I was a single mom and I was just like, I'm, I like this. I think I'm good at it. I'm going to start doing this. And I did photography self-taught for gosh, a decade. And uh, what happened throughout the last portion of that season of my life is I started getting more and more into design. And my husband, um, that we, we got married a decade ago or so. So we are back in 2011, we are um, a team now, but it's kind of grown over the years. So I started out with photography, drew him into the photography scene. And then we ended up just finally going, you know, we really like the design. He started self-teaching. We're all self-taught. Every single thing we do is self-taught. 
we learn really fast. We're just tech, we're tech artists basically. And he is a genius at uh, learning new software for one. It's amazing. But he does the vector design and he does the video editing. And all this has come from necessity. It's all come from people coming to us, needing something, us deciding that we liked it. We must like this too, diving into it and then really honing our craft. And of course, it's been over years and years now. Um, yeah. But originally, I, we started with graphic design and in and, uh, and wanting to kind of help people, businesses with their with their design and branding. Didn't really know how to do that very well. So we just dove, dove into web design. But what's, what it's re, re, um, like evolved into at this point is especially when you're talking about businesses who think outside the box or that they're outside the norm. Um, mm -hmm. The reason we say that is because we are just who we are. We bring to the table what we bring to the table. We're very straightforward about the way that we almost, uh, we're also coaches. So our yeah, coaching hat just okay. comes on. We're just like naturally, <laughs> you know, so we coach throughout the process uh, with branding. We also partner with a company we're going to talk about later, Polarized Branding, who has a genius copywriter, um, sales copy. I mean, he's ridiculous. So he kind of takes care of any of that that we need for us. Um, awesome. I don't claim to be a genius sales copywriter. Okay. But <laughs> I do know branding and design and I love web design. My goal is to make sure that a company is the, their, their online presence is, is congruent with their offline presence. If they are brick and mortar. And if they're not offline, that their online presence is like they have an offline presence where somebody walks through their virtual doors and they're having an entire experience The brand that they have awesome. is not branding is not your logo and your colors and all of that. That's great. That's the aesthetic that's connected to your brand. Your brand is actually who they get behind. That's why most people I tell them, and I say most because there are exceptions, of course, to every rule, but mostly you want to be in front of your brand, especially these days. People are not like messing around with trying to be just buying from brands. They want to know who you are. They want to know the person behind it. They want to know, are you somebody I agree with or disagree with? Are you my people? Are you my tribe? Do I want to get behind who you are before I ever buy from you? So mm -hmm. that's why um, there's a lot that goes into branding, especially with, you know, people, should I be posting on social media about my personal life? Yes, because they care. They care about yeah. who you are as a person, why you're doing what you're doing and why they should care. And that is not anymore allowed to be like in the 1950s where it's just like, dee -dee 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 -dee, this is the product and you should buy it. And here's why, even if it's not true. <laughs> like, I love know? it. You're yeah. so spot on. It is one of those things that, you know, today, we're out there. The whole world can see you. They can see everything you're doing. And it really helps tell the, and I hate the word authentic because I think it's really overused, but yeah. it, it, if, if you're out there as who you are, it lets people really decide whether they're your kind of people or not. And there's nothing right. wrong if you're not, but they can make that decision and nobody gets in anybody's way then at that right. point. So I love the fact that you're that your branding follows you as opposed to the other way around. I think that that's a really smart way to say it. And what do you find? Do you find that you have to wrestle with entrepreneurs a lot to just be themselves or? Oh yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, but that's not, I mean, entrepreneurs, sure. But I think it's just people. I think we have so much misconception about um, how to be well, you know, authentic to be. or transparent or them ourselves. We have so many insecurities. There's so much psychology that goes into actually how we present ourselves to the world. And then we're mm -hmm. asking ourselves to do this now, or the world is asking us on such a, a, a broad scale, um, so vulnerably online where it's like, oh no, my, I've had so many people argue about, well, my online safety and this and that. And I'm like, that's not the world we live in anymore, man. Like yeah. it's not, you gotta, you gotta walk the online streets of the wild west. Like that's where we're at. If you want people to notice you, you gotta be bold. You gotta be weird. You gotta be whoever you are. And that's going to be okay. And the idea is to repel the heck out of the people that you do not want that are not there your you people and have the people that are your people sold out on who you, they're just like, I don't even care. Just sell me dirt. I don't even care what you're selling anymore. Like you're my yeah. people and I want what you have. Shut up and take my money all day long. And it's, but it's natural. It's like, I just want to support the people I want to support. Mm -hmm. And then secondarily, well, I mean, do they have what I need? Do they right. solve a problem? Right. That's exactly. and, that, and that it really is spot on. I can, I I've, can count the number of, I mean, I can't count the number of times I have not realized I technically wanted something or needed something and then got incredibly impressed with somebody through relationship building or whatever it was, learning that their tribe was my tribe, whatever mm -hmm. it is. And then said, you know what, I'm going to get that because that really makes sense the way they're using it or whatever it is authentically in their brand could actually work for mine as well. And I wouldn't have ever gone out looking for that thing. I would right. out look 
for the relationships and, and these amazing people cross your path. When well, you it's really that. all about relationships, isn't it? I mean, that's where branding yeah. has come. It's all, yeah. we are so sick and tired of not having connection that we're just like, please, I don't care. I had a, um, a gentleman the other day when we were, we were having a meeting about our nonprofit and it was for first responders. And he said, his guys were like, we don't care if you're doing a live in-person basket weaving like demonstration. We don't we care anymore. We just want in person. We don't care. And I was I like, okay. Yeah, I know it's true. So it's like, we just want that connection. And the thing is, is that these days our, our brand has to be like, when we talk about, so back to what I was saying about the outside, the norm, mm -hmm. we don't take it the next step, the next level with our brand. We're all about like creating like a, like, what are we about? Blah, blah, blah. But we don't take it the next step. Like, but, but what am I about? What am I doing with this? What's the right. whole purpose behind how I'm impacting my community? You want connection. Well, what's your purpose? And that's really, it's all through what we're really diving into this year. We're going to go next level with, we want companies who are either they know or they don't know, however they start is fine, but we want to help them really dive into what's the impact you're making. Do you even realize, do you know you are making an impact? Even if you sell a widget, you are making an impact on your community. There are restaurants and motels that people are redesigning these days with boutique or uh, boutique, however you say it, uh, mm -hmm. like things in mind just to serve a community because that thing has been there. That, that center of community has been there for decades. And they're like, we need to revive this because it's part of the community it's and it's ours. a restaurant. It. Yeah. Yep. We own but it, it. it's yeah. how I think people think they all have to be the nonprofit and the big, you know, um, the big movement. And it, no, everything you do is impacting those around you. So diving into it intentionally and with more purpose and like understanding the impact that you're making and then that being your brand, you're golden. My God, I really want to sit on that for a minute because that's a really, really good point. So I have. And I'll tell you kind of my quick story. I've inadvertently sure. gotten to an online community because when COVID came, I had always been doing live events and meeting people in person mm -hmm. and building relationships that way. And it and kind of COVID came and I went, oh, better do this online. Yeah. And you've just kind of been making it up online, but realize that it's exactly what you said. I craved community. And now yeah. the purpose is so much more than a long lead time for somebody who may turn in a client someday. I enjoy doing these as much as I enjoy doing my actual client service, because there's a connection there's, yeah. and then you can help other people make connections. And I know what you're saying is going to resonate in the group. So whether you're watching this live or you're watching it on replay, we usually get most of our watches on replay, but, sure. and people ask questions in the group, you know, I'm betting that if we say hands up, you know, are you one of those people who believes that it's your community first and what you're selling second? almost everybody in the group would line up right behind that. And it's why it's such a great community, but that nobody knows how, and I say, nobody, that's probably not true. I didn't until somebody similar to what you do said to me the same thing. They said, Pam, when I Google your name, I don't see this person that you are. I see 80 things and they're all okay, but none of them are related and none of them are tied together. And there's no kind of consistent, Hey, I'm Pam. You know, I'm, I've said this yep. to somebody else. Look, there are two ways I come into a room. I trip in and make an idiot of myself or I walk in on in the room. It's going to be one of the two ways. Me too. <laughs> so, and you never know which one, which is kind of fun. You're yeah. either going to be laughing at me. You're going, wow, that actually kind of, kind of smart. And it, and it, you know, that's what makes it fun. Yeah. But the brand didn't represent that. So I guess you have to tackle that a lot. How do you get underneath the personality of your clients to really say, okay, this is how I need to reflect you. Right. Well, I think that so you just nailed something really hard and I, and, and probably not even on purpose, but this idea that owning our humanness, which allows our audience to own that they just, people just want to know, like, are you not okay? Sometimes is that okay? <laughs> and you're like, are you kidding? I trip into the room half the time and I'm an idiot. And you know mm -hmm. what? I love that. I'm okay with it. Like I I'm so okay with who I am at this point. And to be honest yep. with my history and my past and my upbringing and all that, I shouldn't be, but I'm like, forget it. This is where we're at. I'm, I mean, I'm like, laughing. yeah, I, it's, it's what it is, man. It's the journey. And I would rather the journey just be so, so much more fun and interesting than the goal. Um, I talk a lot about, and this, this goes into business parenting, you know, your religious beliefs, your, whatever it is that you're doing, th this goes into that is when th it's, this battle between, is it the journey or is it the goal? Is it the journey? Yeah. Is it the goal? And a lot of people think that the journey exists to get to the goal. And actually it's the other way around. The goal only exists 
so that the journey will happen. Because otherwise mm -hmm. it wouldn't. If we didn't have that thing we're always shooting for, the journey wouldn't happen. We wouldn't be like, you know what I want to do? Go on a long walk for no reason and really enjoy it. Like, no, no one's doing that. So we have the goal only. And that's why the goal always moves. I believe that's why the yeah. goal is always moving. And we're always like, it's never within my reach. And like, we get upset about it, but actually it's more like the only reason we actually continue on that. And we really want to, you know, go for it. And that's why we say break your goals down too, branding wise, parenting wise, whatever, because you got to have some small wins, some, some wins, but always have that big hairy goal out there where you're like, make it impossible because yeah. you got to have something you're and yeah. I'll tell you, I know a couple of people, very successful business people who like set the goal, achieve the goal, whatever it is, hundred million dollar mm -hmm. business yep. valuation, sell their business or like, yes, I did it in the next day. It's like, oh, they're depressed yep. as all get out. And it's true depression. It's not, it's actual grief. Yep. And I think it's exactly what you said is like the journey was a blast, but then they thought the journey was over. Yep. And it like never is. So getting the goal doesn't mean that the journey's over. And I think that was something really important. I, I love the way you say that. Um, right. But how do you dig it out of a client? So a lot of clients aren't necessarily, I'm sure, like totally aware even. Like if you said, mm -hmm. like if you do ask somebody, you know, what is your personality? What is it? Who are you? Do, you? do you get good answers to that? Are people able to answer that question? Or well, those aren't the questions I ask. That's the thing. So I'm I'm a coach also, right? So my coach hat goes on and I start doing, it's almost like life coaching. I'll be honest. It's not like okay. weird, weird, uncomfortable life coaching where I'm like, I'm going to ask you to dig into your childhood. Okay. So we're going to do your brand. Uh, it's like, people would be like, no, nah, uh, I'm leaving now. I'm not, I know, uh, I'm not done. down for that. But no, it, it's more like, you know, let's talk about, let's, let's dig into from a different angle. Let's dig into this. Let's talk about, okay, well, why did you start doing what you were doing at all? Why, why, why do you care if the people like what you do? Why do you care? Do you care? And what happens when they do care, when they buy into what you're doing and then they get a result? How does that resonate with you? Why do you care about that? Mm -hmm. And digging in layer and layering, la like go down as many layers. Well, why do you care about that? Well, why do you care about that? And getting into the, all the way down to the you got to get down to the, the why. And I know everyone says, make it the why, but see, we stop at the top reason, the top why, which is t nonsense. We don't want to stop at that. What we need to know is, and this is again, all parts of life, but it's, if people forget to apply this to business mm -hmm. uh, and their brand, especially is we need to get down to the, why am I doing this to a level of, if I don't, it's too painful not to. That's well, the level you want to be at, whether it's in whatever part of your life, right? Yeah. So you want to be at the level of, oh, 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 I have to do it now. Thinking about to. the alternative really stinks. Yeah. Well, I so, mean, and and almost past that, it's got to be, I don't have a choice. I hmm. have to serve these people or I'm jipping everybody. I'm, I'm letting people down. I'm wasting my time here on earth if I don't do this. Now, I'm is your business to the, them. are you to a point in your business and your branding and serving your clients at that level? If you're not, you can be, but it's a matter of questioning and walking it out. And then you get down to, oh, I didn't even, people have cried. I didn't even realize that's why I was really doing this. That makes more sense. Now I understand. They get, they start to connect the dots of why they're connected to their business the way they are. They know it's deep, but they don't know why. And it does starts everything, to. Does everything come out of that? Like, so for example, you get to that. First of all, I think you've shared a great self ex exercise any of us can do even alone, which I oh, think yeah. is great. So, you know, you, you've made me make a note here to go, oh, you know, take the why down two or three or four more layers. You And and I would bet when you think you're at the bottom, there's another step you can go. Oh, so yeah. Really mm -hmm. cool self exercise. I love it. But, or, and once you get through that process with somebody, does the, does the, the true brand and design emerge for you or do you sit with it for a while? Tell me what the creative process is like. So you. that's, that's longer. I mean, this is just like, we need to have somebody really connected to why they even care. And then, because if you don't know why you care, then you can't get down to why your right. client cares about what you have. <laughs> and it is really about connecting. Like, it's like, if you don't, People talk about, well, if, don't get into a relationship. If you don't love yourself, then somebody else can't, you can't, if you can't sell why somebody would love you, because you don't love you, a relationship's going to fail. It's the same with business. If yep. I can't sell to you why this is extremely important, then I can't, you know, ha I expect you to be so If I can't yep. do it, then you can't if back I don't it either. It, how can you believe in it? Yeah, yeah. And, and that's a kind of an age-old business, you know, um, stance. But getting down to the, 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 the meat of it makes you have so much more substance and depth as a company and a brand that then you can start to really draw that out of your, my, my goal is to make a domino effect, right? So I want them to start to understand why they're doing it, which then starts to um, make them start thinking about, 
well, wait a minute. Now, these things that I cared about before with my brand, do I care about those things now? Is that really who I am? Does it align with what I just discovered? And you start to peel back the layers of, can I just be me? Is that fine? Can I just say my brand is, I stand for these three things, not all these things. And, and I, and I'm, I'm out there in the community and I'm doing 75 things. You don't need to do 75 things. You need to be the expert at these one or two or three things that you destroy it and burn the house down every time. Like somebody it. comes in and they're like, I don't go to anybody else for this because not only are they like oh, amazing to be around and every time I leave their presence, I'm just built up and I'm, I'm lit up, but yep. like they destroy the content, like, or, or whatever the thing is that I'm buying from them, nobody else does it better. So it's almost a no brainer. You, you want people to feel kind of dumb for saying no to buying from you. Like I, I love it. Like, you know, love I mean, it. I didn't, somebody comes by and they go, wait a minute. You didn't, you didn't go with them. What happened? And they're always God. blaming it on you. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I like it couldn't have been them because they're so crazy good at this and they're amazing to be it around. You know what you. I mean? That kind of a yep. brand. And it's I really unique every time. It's unique every time. It totally depends on what you're doing. It totally depends on where you're at in the process already. It depends on the baggage you're bringing in. It depends on if there's somebody that told you something that's nonsense. I got to talk you out of like, mm -hmm. hey, that's not true. And yeah, money is not the why is it's yes, it's the result. Money is just Great a tool. Point, yep. Money is energy. just a tool for impact. That is yep. all it is. We have so many, this is a whole other live. We're not going to get into it, but money, <laughs> it, there's so many, um, uh, false relationships with money that drive our brands and it just yeah. doesn't have a place in a brand. It doesn't. Yeah, I it agree. Doesn't. It's um, interesting. It's it's yeah. very interesting. I agree with that completely. And that's strange coming from a money person. Yeah. But keep going. You were going to say something and my dogs are barking. So no, it's awful. fine. It's fine. I have kids and all of that too. So that's, we all work from home now. We have lives. Remember. I, Another I, part of the reality. Yeah, I mean, yeah. in the room or my dogs are chasing me into the room. <laughs> well, but you know what? You have healthy dogs. I always say when, you know, when this, my, my life coaching comes out, sorry, uh, sorry, not sorry, but you know, people talk about, Oh, my husband does this. My husband does that. So you know what I, you know what I, I, I do now when my husband has his stuff laying around, I go, you know what? I have a husband to have stuff laying around. And if it wasn't there, I wouldn't have a husband and I'd be a lot sadder. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't okay. matter to me. So, you yeah. know what I mean? Like your dogs are back there. I'm happy that you get it. Cause you know what I can't have? I can't have dogs because my dog well, is allergic. Oh, that is sad. Well, speaking of my brand, they're in an intimately part of my brand. Yay! Of that reason, but for plenty of other reasons as well. But anybody who's ever had a course or a coaching or has been a client has met the dogs. It just happens. That's it's perfect. It's part I of, love the, that. Part of the brand. Yeah. That reminds me of a client that I had that owned a salon and she had a salon mascot. And he was this little wiener dog and he was absolutely adorable and the most loving, like, like being on the planet. I was going to say Aww. human being. Cause he was like a human being and his name was Titan. He just recently passed away and it was like the, it destroyed her, you know, cause he, she'd had him like for a long for time. The little dogs live so yeah. long. But we yeah. took pictures when I was doing photography with, alongside the website design, we, we told the story and that's the other part of branding, right? It, it, we told the story with the dog and we took photos of him in there and the experience people would have with the dog seems like something okay. of an oversight, but not. People get on, they were like, oh, wait a minute. You have a, like a dog I can see and pet and looks like other people. Then their reviews, people are like, I love hanging out with Titan. This, no, I can't go to a salon and do that. Dog. Yeah. I'd love it's it. part of her brand. In my lap. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That would be so, amazing. I think it's also, it's storytelling. It's digging into people resonate with emotions, storytelling and living in, in humanness. Our, our mm -hmm. human nature is the most attractive thing. Yep. That's it. Speaking of which. Yes. He's over there. Howling. Oh. I'm on the other side of the gate, mom. Yes, I know. <laughs> it's like, Sorry. No, you are, buddy. And he'll probably start howling in a minute. But OK, so a couple of things people have got, I think, can really take away from this. One is that start with the why, but don't just stop with the first why. Mm -hmm. Take the why and dig down. Just keep going layer after layer after layer until you get to something that that's really what I heard you say was visceral. Visceral. Yeah. You know, whatever it is that it triggers, you know, it's triggered something at that point. Right. And then that could, you said something really interesting that could really redefine some stuff that you always thought was your brand. Yes. Is it, am I, I never, really that? Yeah. I never really thought about that because we do, we come in and we say, okay, what should, what color should I pick? What should my logo be? What should this be? And it's interesting. We just had a meeting, um, of the team recently. And I said, you know what? I want to change our colors. I said, our colors are pastels. I never pastel my way into a room. And I said what I said to you, I either trip and fall head up, you know, with my right on my ass or I'm, I'm going in and taking command of the room. I said, let's yeah. find some colors that do yeah. that. 
And I was like, wow, so what you said really, really clicked with me. And I never thought of any of that going in. And I know that a lot of folks just starting out are really thinking about that. So how soon in a business life cycle? So we have coaches in our group everywhere from I just quit a corporate job and I've taken and gotten certified in coaching and I'm doing life coaching. We have some really, really amazing functional health coaches who've been at it for a while. We have coaches in marriage and divorce. We have coaches in, you know, some that have not made their first dollar and others that are, you know, two to $3 million. Mm -hmm. When in the process does taking the brand and turning it into something like, I don't know what I'm asking. I do know what I'm asking, but I don't know how to say it. When is it time to call somebody like you and say, Hey, we need to, I need your help to make sure I'm consistent where I should be consistent and, and gotcha. picking the right colors. Like when do we call? Okay. So there's, a, there's several different, you know, things that we do. And there's, there's really, there's different times in, in a business that things are important. Um, I will say this, while branding is really important, branding is not your colors and your logo. Remember what you yeah. really need to be doing in the very beginning is thinking about who do you love to work with? Huh. What do you love to do? What are you good at? What do you want to do for a living? And who do you want to do that with as an audience? And then start digging, digging down to two things. What am I about? What can people get behind with me? Right. That's the one I said two things, but you know, it's like seven. And then, and then number two is uh, what solution can I provide that? I mean, I know, I know, like, I mean, I know it right. Our, our underdog danger foundation is because my husband's been fighting heart disease for over 20 years. And he's been through everything you can been through, be through with heart disease. And he's fought it. He's overcome it. He's a warrior. And we're like, you know what? And our daughter's a, a police officer um, in out of a different state from us in Utah. And we're a blue family. And we're just like, I mean, we really started to put two and two together for all these things. I mean, to be tr truthful, uh, you know, we're, we have a, a heavy faith involved in everything that we do, which happens yeah. to be a, a, a low, low, low layer of like I dug in. And I was like, you know, when it gets down to it, I'm doing things that God's calling me to do. That's enough. You know, you don't go back from that. Like, I'm it's like, well, more visceral than that. Yeah, it's visceral. It's everything. And when I at the end of the day, I'm compromising on things. That's what I'm compromising on. Mm -mm. Not part yeah. of who I am. It changes everything. It's changed the game. Right. So when we're talking about, you know, the things you need to know in the beginning is what can I what can people get behind that other people are behind that I'm behind? But also, what can I solve for them? What kind of pain can I take away? And how can I create connection through that in community? So that's before your colors, before all of that. So when you're building your brand, you're really doing all that before you're doing any of your colors or anything. Feel free yep. to not spend very much time on building, uh, grabbing some colors. Do not overanalyze this. I am a recovering perfectionist. I'm telling you, it's the most painful thing you'll ever freaking do. Stop spending so much time on perfecting your logo and your colors for the love of God. <laughs> be your brand. Discover your band yeah. and be your brand first. Go, like go into the room. Like you said, trip and fall. Uh, who cares? Let's go serve people for, with everything you've got. Become their greatest advocate. And the thing is, is that they will start to, if you do that first, yep. then you will start to understand from them. It's just like when raising your kids, your kids tell you how to raise them, not a book, not society. Your kids tell you what they need, how a relationship should be. And then you respond as the adult, right? Mm -hmm. But at, in a branding situation, in a, in, a, in a service situation, or even products, it's like, what does my audience need? That's the right answer. What is, yep. Do market research. All those things should come before you're worried about like working with someone like me. It really should be two, two different things. Once you've gotten to that point, then it's like, okay, I know what I'm all about, who I serve and what problem I solve, Jessica. All right. Now, how do we create a aesthetic that matches that. And when somebody walks in that virtual room, they freaking know what I'm about and they're whether not. they're in the right place or the wrong place for them. And they yeah. know right away. And that's what we want to do. It's more about experience and knowing and not wasting anybody's freaking time. Right. We don't want to waste their time. Like, do they know where they're at? And then the other time to work with me is when you've been working and you're like, I had, I did the logo, just, I did the colors. I've been serving people, but I want to scale. Like, I, I feel like this needs to be like, like you, like I need my, my colors right anymore. I've really dug yeah. deep. I've talked to my market. I've served people. I've learned a lot. I've mm -hmm. gone places with this and I feel like I know what I want and I know what I don't want to do. So let's yeah. rebrand. Let's take that and refresh and really make it a solid shift into something that I'm going to go to the next level, not a total chaos, you know, right. pivot. Right. But I'm going to represent it. I'm yeah. going to really own representing it. So you said a couple things, that, and I have a question, and, and sure. then uh, Catherine's here saying hi. So hi back, Catherine. Hi, Catherine. 
But Marianne really touched on it with her comment when she said uh, about core values. So you said, and I love it, you said, what won't I compromise on? Mm -hmm. And to Marianne's point, core values to me are the things we don't compromise on. And um, I, that really spoke to me. It's like, how can I find out what I really am doing here? And, and what I can get underneath is ask that question. What can't, what won't I compromise on? And that leads me to my next question, which a lot of really smart people have said, and, and I think I believe them is don't be afraid of being controversial. Oh yeah. But you said, you know, 100%. and I agree with you, repel the people that don't jive with you. Mm -hmm and attract the ones that do. So it's okay to make a very strong statement. You know, yeah. we're a blue family, yes. you know, whatever that statement is, that's cool. If people hang up who don't want to hang out with people who are blue families, fine. Yep. It's probably not the place for you. If, you know, somebody knows that, that I'm gay and they don't want to hang out with me anymore. Cause I'm gay. Hey, that's, you know, part of the family, right? But it's not, and there's no judgment around it. And I think people are so scared. And I know I was initially, I thought yeah. I had to please everybody to be successful. Right. What's your, it, it's just, is it dead wrong? <laughs> oh, no, you are, you're nailing it. And here's why. If you're going to get into a romantic relationship, ah. the number one rule is don't give them something that's different than what they're going to get for the rest of their life. For, <laughs> for, please don't do that because then you got to be everything that you're like, we're getting into a relationship when you're working with somebody, especially True. if you're a coach. Oh my gosh, you guys, if you're a coach, you're in a relationship. And yeah. like what worst thing there is than to get into a relationship with somebody and then be like, this is not what I signed up for. You're a totally different person. This is what? Oh, now you stand for things I never would have gotten behind, but I had no idea. Being lukewarm in your brand is one of the biggest mistakes you can make. Love I mean, that. I mean, being wrong in your brand is one thing, but being lukewarm, you're not standing for anything. It's not a brand. It's, it's essentially an existence. You're just like, I'm hanging out on the couch. Somebody please buy from me. I don't know what I am. Like it's, it's lukewarm. It's not standing for, I can get, we are so hooked on core values as humans, mm -hmm. like as we should be, that that needs to be, like she said, that needs to be like the basis and mm -hmm. because you're not especially as I, I want to reiterate for those in the back, if you're a coach, they are, you are the brand. <laughs> and they better get whatever they got going in. It I better be it. everything. No hiding anything. Because you're going to ask them to do very vulnerable things. As a coach, yep. you should never ask them to do anything you're not willing to do. So yep. if you're going to ask them to go after their dreams and never compromise and be transparent and authentic and all the things we say as a coach and to dig in and to be not afraid of being vulnerable and the pain that comes with re releasing trauma, oh, all the things. Oh, hello. We need to be doing that in our branding and being authentically yep you know, I transparent. It. Yeah. It, it, it's just, it polarizing is where it's yeah. at these days. And it is counterintuitive because we are raised to be nice to everybody and, you know, always say please and thank you and do all the things. And I think it's so important to recognize that we're not in that world anymore. Number one. And number two, it's not good for business because you are, you're going to, you're not going to get as much attention from the people who really need you and would resonate with you. And you're going to get a lot of attention from people that don't. And, and I love that. So I've got like, three massive takeaways from this for people. One awesome. is ask the why at every level, start at the top and work yourself down until you get a visceral reaction and go, Oh, yikes. Yeah. If that's you're not right. crying, you're not deep enough yet. There you go. If you're not crying. Yeah. I love that. If you're not crying, it's not deep enough. The second one is know what you won't compromise on. That really hit me today, like a ton of bricks. So that's my light bulb for today. Awesome. I don't have to learn anything else today. I'm, that's awesome. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, and when you know what you won't compromise on, you know your core values and you know you know how to state them so that people are either going to go, yep, I'm in or yeah, I'm out. So right. I love that. And the third is that branding isn't your logo. What did I miss? What are other like two other big takeaways you'd love for well, people? What to I want to reiterate something just to make sure for those people that I know, I already hear the objections like, well, I don't want to be polarizing because I don't want to be. You just said we're supposed to be nice polarizing is not being against things. It's being for things. So remember when you're out there polarizing your market and you're saying, I'm for this, I'm for this. You're never saying, but they suck and they're ridiculous. And if you're for them, I hate you. That's not what we're doing. That's the world. That's what the world is doing. And that's not what we're doing. Yeah, exactly. Okay? That's great, not, let's be the light. Okay. Let's yeah. It's great. all about standing for the things you feel strongly about. And aren't we all wanting to do that? So let's do that as it resonates with our business and our audience, and then mm -hmm. get your audience to do that. We want to affect people's lives or we wouldn't be doing anything we're doing, especially if you're a coach like that. You're trying to 
compel them to make change. You can't do that from a lukewarm state. You just yep. can't. You're just yep. not boiling anyone to it's the surface. job. In most places, it's our job to change something. Even if you're selling barbecue sauce, like one of yes. my clients is your job is to change their experience of food and right. or up, up their experience of food. So right. there's a bunch of ways that you can reach Jessica. Yeah. But um, what do you have like where people can attack? Do you have a program or anything that people can get? Yeah. So, so while you can obviously go to our website, saltedorange.com and check out everything that we do. I mean, we can work out a package for you and all of that. And, uh, you know, there's all those options um, right now. And it's funny. I love that this was the timing of this. I'm all about timing. I love timing. Oh, yesterday. Right. Yeah. Yesterday, we actually partner, um, like I said, with our good friend, Chaz uh, Maluski, who owns Polarized Branding. And he is on the um, like a little bit of the opposite spectrum from us. He's not a designer. He's all about messaging, sales copy, like your whole everything we just talked about today. He can write copy for all of that. The man is like a branding genius. He can talk about masculine, feminine, whether somebody's in this market or that market. And he is so much fun to be around. He is your dude. And awesome. he's just, he's just so fun. So we partnered with him on a specific program that we thought would be exactly what a whole bunch of people out there are needing right now. Cause we have done some market research. We've been running a group together for quite a while and we've served them with coaching and everything, but what they've really been crying out for is great. I'm getting down into it, you guys, but I can't really execute on a lot of the things that you guys are saying that are a good idea. Cause we're business coaches too, like I said, but it's like, you know, he's like an amazing business coach, but it's like, you know, but, but I just, I can't execute on any of this Chaz. I don't know branding. I don't know design. I don't know tech. I'm not tech savvy, or I'm tired of being this content machine. I'm so busy now that I have no time. I need to outsource. So what we decided was we put together uh, something called, it's a membership called Brand HQ and it's at polarizedbranding.com. It explains everything, but essentially it is a monthly membership subscription. You guys are going to love it. This comes with so much. It's, it's really a no brainer because it's like having your own design team on staff, but not on staff. You're like retaining us monthly. And essentially there's a list of all kinds of things. And even things that we, that aren't on the list, we can, we'll consider. We want to have communication with you about what it actually means for your company, for this subscription to work for you. But if you need videos edited, if you need, like, if you're like, I, I, I love my YouTube videos, but I don't know any of the tech to make them actually be what they should be to look like I know what I'm doing. And so I would love to just do my YouTube videos and send them over to my design team every week. And then you do this. And you do the magic and we we manage YouTube channels and, and we produce broadcasts uh, for, for podcasts, you know, and all kinds of things. But we do graphics, you know, social media graphics, uh, print design, brochures, video editing. He writes copy, sales copy, email sequences, um, launch sequences, all, all the things you hate doing. You're pulling your hair out. You either don't have time or you don't have the skills or you're preach overwhelmed. It, preach it, preach it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just so much. We just found people are like, I just can't do it all. Exactly. And you shouldn't. But without having to hire a team or a, employees, um, this is something we do. It, now, here's the thing. This is the cool part about it. There's two things that are really stand out about this program. Number one, it's unlimited. However, it's one project at a time. So you can right. have 10 projects or one project or whatever. If it's one huge project, whatever you want to fit into that month, you know, we'll we'll work with you at one project at a time. You queue it into your client portal. And we work on the next one as soon as that's done. It's also unlimited revisions. We'll get it right for you until it's right. We learn your brand over time. And the faster we get, or the, the more we learn, the faster we get, right? Yep, I love it. It's a relationship. So it's like, we're your team, we're your guys. The other part that's a no-brainer is because we're coaches, we thought, yeah, but you're not going to know. What about the, the tech specs of like, how do I shoot a video, you guys? Like I'm sending you crappy video. You can't make it work if it's crappy. Kind of yep. just as an example, so what we also offer is uh, you get two free included, and they don't take up a project space in the queue, two free coaching, brand brand coaching sessions. So like, we'll just coach you on, all right, this is what you're going to do for this. This is how you're going to send me good content. Let's talk about the next um, right move on your content that you're going to send us on the projects. Mm -hmm. You know, how do I know what projects? Well, let's coach them. All right. We're going to sit down with you twice a month and coach you on what the next move is. Oh, it's two like, sessions monthly. They get two sessions you. monthly. Yeah. With either the copywriter or the video editor or, or me, I would be graphic design, web design, right. And things like that. So it's like, it, you're, there's no excuses. You're going to put out good content. I mean, Chaz is really good at, he'll, he can create a whole social media calendar if you wanted to hire him for that. Like he's just good. Um, and this is the thing you guys is that this is something that you can cancel anytime. There's no contracts. We just want to do it. And we're offering it at a ridiculous discount um, because it's just launched. So it is awesome. going to, it's going to be in March um, three grand a month in February. It's 1500. 
This is all Holy lock God. in, lock it in. And the first 10 people, which we have not filled up, first 10 people are a thousand a month locked in. Folks, um, you may yeah. want to check out polarizedbranding.com. I will tell you from having experience of five years doing this the wrong way for so long that if this had been available to me two years ago, I'd have been all over it because exactly what she described, what Jessica's described is what I found. I could get a little bit of help here and a little bit of help here and a little bit of help here. Mm -hmm. Nobody was looking at the whole marketing, branding, getting clients, funnel, lead generation thing for me and going, hey, you yep. got problems here. We need to patch it. We need to narrow your focus. We need to do these things. And I blessedly have, have recently, all the pieces have fallen into place beautifully, but you don't want to wait two years. Oh, it's so long. <laughs> yeah. To fall into place. Oh, and by that's the way, all, that's real. Right. That's how long it took. It's polarized branding, by the way. No D, just in case. No D. Okay, hang on. Let me fix that, and I'll also fix it in the um, in the polarized branding. I don't I'll want all the poor people to be like, "Wait, that link didn't work." What's what happening? You just said here. I'll put it yeah, in the comments. Yeah, but it's well. it's just something that um, you know, we feel like this is going to solve a lot of problems, and we are here to grow with you. So if it's something that like you know you have some good ideas about what we could put in the in the membership, like, let's hear it. Our, our philosophy as a company, like we, we've really teamed up with him on releasing this. And one of the things is, is that we've decided that the best idea in the room wins. If you have a good idea, it's not a hierarchy. We're not better than you. Like, let's all talk about, let's, let's, let's make our businesses work to impact the community. Hello. We're here to support that. That, that more than anything, or as much as anything else you've said, it just tells you, you know, you're really part of the team. Like I said, and when that falls into place, it's fantastic, but it takes a long time if you don't have somebody who really knows how to help you get there. So yeah. um, I don't often like say, call this woman, go to this link when I'm doing these snack and learns, but this has been such an Achilles heel for me. And the way you've articulated what you do and how you do it is so clear and covers all the places where I had pain points that I'm really recommending folks listen to this thing. I will put in the header of this, um, Thank you. of this snack and learn, you know, start at minute three when we actually started talking. Um, so they missed the whole, you know, my <laughs> figuring out tech at the beginning, but you know, there's a lot of important information in here. And, and I think the most important thing is this link. So thank you so much for jumping on. Thank there's you. A, you gave us stuff we can do today by ourselves, but you've also given us a place to go to get more information. And oh, Oh, I have a ahead. freebie for you. I forgot. I have a freebie for you, what? for your audience. Oh, yeah. I can't what? come empty handed. I've got words, but I've got words. So, oh, yeah, really? I have. What I'll do is, if you want, I can just drop it in, in the link in or the, let's see. How do I you give you drop, a PDF guide? You can drop How, it in the, I think you can drop a link in private chat on on. Well, streaming. it's like I have I have a link to it's a PDF. So okay. if you want, I can just send it to you if you want to send it out to. How do you want me to do it? Well, I'll do it. Do you see the private chat here on StreamYard? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Drop it right in there and I'll Absolutely. put it right in the comments. Right okay, because I was like, what's the best way for your audience? I want to make sure that it's, you yeah, know, you know your audience you. better than me. So, all right. And then I'm going to also, you know, put a little extra oomph on this thing. Because uh, I've got a media guide. So this guide is essentially like one of the things that we would, you know, kind of type of stuff we'd be sharing with you during a coaching session. It's essentially... Um, you know, a media guide to what would you want to talk about in a YouTube video or a live stream or a podcast? What's your layout, your outline of, of content for the whole thing? What do you need to keep in mind? What's a hook? What's the, you know, what's the content? Where do you do CTAs? What's the best order for that? What do you want to consider okay. when putting together a podcast, you know, season? And then all of your tech, like checklist, like if I thought about lighting, have I thought about this? What's, you know, all of that. So, oh my god! I can't wait to download. So did you drop it in there yet? I'm trying, but it doesn't give me an option um, for um, like a like a file. It just has chat. Uh, can so. you just paste a link in there? This is what I'm going to do. Hold on one second. Mm, copy. I'm going to see if this works. I'm just going to use like a browser link. Yeah, do that, and then what I can do is download it and actually add it as a document in our group and point people to it. Does that give you? Uh, there we go. Hang on. Let me grab it. Copy. We'll make it happen. We will make it happen. We are dropping it in. Marianne's all over it. I know she's going to be getting to you. All right. There is the link for the free guide. And let me just make a note. Free guide above. Yeah. Uh, that is fantastic uh, for us only. There we go. All right. This is fantastic. Now, really quickly, I'm very curious about mm -hmm. your not-for-profit. Yeah. Why you do it, but how can we find it? And um, what are, Absolutely. what are the needs? 
So underdogninja.org, and it has a ton of information on there. We are just this year shifting to primarily first responders, veterans, and frontline workers. Um, we're working with currently, we're, we're diving into talking to some chiefs, some FOPs, which is the Fraternal Order of Police. Um, I have some nurse friends who are getting me connected with their HR. And of course, any veterans would not be connected with a organization. It would just be individuals. But this is something that we feel very strongly about, not only for a person, both, both things, heart disease and the community we want to serve it lands with us and our we talked to our board of directors about it they were so excited it was just something we felt like this year was the time to really niche down into that and really dive into serving that community so we're going to start talking about fundraising volunteers we are looking to add two board members this year uh, that are involved in the first responder veteran uh, frontline worker um uh, space like that the demographic but also in those communities that could speak for those communities but also are passionate about heart disease. We offer programs. Um, we have a membership talking about health and wellness because I'm actually a nutritionist and my husband is a um, certified personal trainer and exercise therapist on top of uh -huh. So that was like our other, we have two whole separate parts of our lives where we do education, like all design, all these things. And then also all this wellness stuff we've been doing since 2013. So we feel very strongly about like helping these communities and ultimately have huge dreams for, um, you know, underdog ninja, but we're still in our first couple of years or in our baby stages. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's going, it's tracking, it's going well. We just have to start building, um, you know, the, the exposure so that people can start diving in and really taking advantage of the, of the programs and, and fundraising. Yeah. Tell me if I got that right. First responder, frontline workers and veterans with heart disease, underdog ninja is dot org. org. Yep. You got it. Fantastic. So thank you for telling us about that. We'll definitely be checking that out. I uh, work with one of the people I need to connect you with in here is Trish Schallenberger, who runs the soldier's hands. Oh. And uh, I'm sure there, and the other person is Matt Denny, who does a lot of work with veterans and actually just recently amazing um, retired actively. So I'll get you connected with both of those folks too, thank because you. I found there's always amazing. Oh, Marianne is saying the guide link did not work. And I'm going okay, to tell I will her, send you the actual thanks, file. Thanks. We'll I will send you the actual file in Messenger. And then you can create, if you would like to create like a download link in the group or, or just, you know, if you want, I could upload it to the group if you want. That's it. what I'm thinking. Upload it to the group and okay, just I'll do, do, that. Post, do it in a new post. And I'll actually connect the snack and learn in that post. Great. And Marianne, thank you so, so much for telling us that before we get off the phone. Perfect. Can That's I just tell you your community, community awesome. has been just uh, refreshing. You, I, awesome. I always love diving into new communities that I'm not connected with yet, not just for like, obvious, you know, networking purposes, yeah. but I am all about connection too, obviously. And I love diving into whole new communities where I always know, and I can already tell in this just first, just talking to you alone, if your tribe follow, if it follows you as anything like you, this is going to be an amazing community to be a part awesome. of. Well, we're working hard to it. make it a great place. Thank you for being part of it. That's what makes it work. So, Thank so you. glad. And Marianne, thanks for helping us out here. Um, and I'm God, I don't want to stop the conversation, but I guess I kind of have to. <laughs> well, we have, good things must end. I think all good things must end. Thank you. Drop it on a campfire sometime. Would love, would love to yeah, have you. Yeah, totally. There. And um, everybody have a great, what are we, Tuesday? So yeah. into the week, wherever you are, whether it's 29 degrees like here or 69 degrees like Florida, enjoy. And thank you so much, Jessica, especially for powering through our, our tech problems at the beginning. Absolutely. Take care, everybody. Thank you.